Tonight on Y News. Alacanang expects China to have open ears when President Rodrigo Duterte begins discussing how to resolve tensions in the disputed West Philippine Sea. The owner of the Chinese vessel that hit and sank a Filipino fishing boat in June apologizes almost three months after calling it an accident. The Philippine Navy says they are finalizing the rules of engagement when dealing with trespassing foreign vessels. The National Bureau of Investigation files graft and criminal charges against 21 PhilHealth officials and employees in connection with the ghost dialysis meths. And Members Church of God International receives another recognition. Good evening. Malacanang is optimistic China will have open ears when President Rodrigo Duterte raises the West Philippine Sea arbitral ruling whether China likes it or not. Rosalicos reports why. President Rodrigo Duterte maintained that he will raise the arbitral ruling whether China likes it or not that favors the Philippines in the disputed territories in the West Philippine Sea during his fifth visit to China. This is to prevent misunderstanding and tension between the two parties regarding the maritime dispute. I think China will have an open ears. After all, they kept on saying that we're friends. And friends can always talk about anything. Moreover, I think it's about time really they talk about it since if the concern is maritime security, and peace in the region. The palace is confident this visit will further strengthen the relationship of the two countries. You must remember that the relationship between these two countries are not dependent alone on the Western and Sea issue. There are so many issues that we can agree on. The trade relations, the people-to-people -people exchange, the cultural exchanges and many others that is mutually beneficial to both countries. The president will meet Chinese President Xi Jinping and Chinese Premier Li Keqiang. The joint oil exploration in the West Philippine Sea is among the Philippine chief executive's top agenda. In the joint oil exploration, the Philippines will get 60% of the resources while China will get the 40%. Maybe that's the result of the friendship that we've been saying between the two countries. And therefore, it's mutually beneficial because both countries are agreeing on a mood as with respect to the exploitation of natural resources. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Beijing, China. The owner of the Chinese vessel through a Chinese association has apologized for the Recto Bank incident last June 9. In a, mem in a memorandum posted by the Department of Foreign Affairs D or DFA on Twitter, the Chinese association where the ship owner is a member sends their sympathies to the Filipino fishermen for the collision between the Chinese and Philippine fishing boats. The name of the said association was not disclosed by the DFA. The association also came up with the accident investigation report. They reiterated that the said collision was an, in, was an unintentional mistake. However, they still believe that the Chinese vessel should still take the major responsibility for the accident. Malacanang, meanwhile, expresses acceptance of the apology rendered by the Chinese vessel owner. On June 9, 20, to, on June 9 Filipino fishermen were abandoned after a Chinese vessel accidentally rammed their fishing boat in Recto Bank. The Philippine Navy is finalizing the, its rules of engagement when dealing with the passage of foreign vessels into the territorial waters of the Philippines. Here's why from April Senadoza. Ang concept namin is uh, pag nakita namin sa look dito ng monitoring station, if we have ships available, we Shadow. Natin sa kanila na nandito ka sa territorial waters. 
the Philippine Navy has the drafting of the protocol to determine the pronouncement of President Rodrigo Duterte underway. The President has earlier said foreign vessels that will enter Philippine waters must ask for permission as the government would act in an unfriendly manner should they fail to do so. Philippine Navy Chief Flag Officer in Command Vice Admiral Robert M. Pedrad said should they monitor ship intrusions within Philippine waters, they will immediately send their vessels. The Navy will continue to challenge passage of foreign vessels if it's expeditious and if its automatic identification system or AIS is shut down. If foreign vessels didn't conduct an innocent passage, the Navy would prepare a report so the Department of Foreign Affairs could file a diplomatic protest. Defense Secretary Delfi Lorenzana has earlier stated the Philippines' capability to stop ship intrusions is very weak. This is why the Philippine Navy pursues the need for modernization. Kasi ng waters natin. And, uh... We need to uh, modernize our Philippine Navy. Kulang barko natin, kaya yung enhance natin yung littoral monitoring station natin so that we can see yung mga pumapas. April Senedoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The NBI found negligence and connivance in the work of 21 employees and officials of PhilHealth. Leah Ilagan explains why. And employees of the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation or PhilHealth are facing criminal charges. NBI Deputy Director for Investigation Service Vicente de Guzman says, based on their investigation, they had negligence in their work and had connivance with WellMed Dialysis Center, so they were able to get claims even for patients who were dead since 2016. Uh, it appears na uh, ganon eh na nagkaroon sila ng ano kasi they were given undue benefit out of the acts of uh, the accreditation uh, committee Attorney Ferdinand Brazon, the agent on the case said from January to May 2019, WellMed Dialysis Center got 1.8 million pesos worth of claims. De Guzman added their investigation is still ongoing to file raps against others involved. We are still tracking uh, that, but we, can, we cannot categorically say na mayroon. Kaya po ang, ang investigasyon ng NBI ay patuloy, eh, we want to establish kung ano talaga ang mayroong linkages nitong mga uh, healthcare providers na ito with the officers of uh, some with some officers of PhilHealth. The case has filed against the 21 PhilHealth officials and employees are the violation of Section 3 of the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act, the National Health Security Act of 2013, and the Code of Conduct and Ethical Standards for Public Officials and Employees. Leia Ilagan, UNTV. News and Rescue, Manila. The Bureau of Jail Management and Penology in Calabarzon recognizes Members Church of God International or MCGI for their services to persons deprived of liberty in the region. Sherwin Kulubong will tell us why. To give hope to persons deprived of liberty by preaching the words of God, Members Church of God International or MCGI relentlessly serve our fellow men behind bars and because of MCGI's continuous support. Plus medical and dental missions, the BJMP gave recognition to the group led by Brother Eli Soriano as the agency celebrates their 28th anniversary in Malbar, Batangas. Karon man ang pagkilala o wala sa samahang ito ay mananatili po ang serbisyo ng pagkahayag ng salita ng Diyos, lalo na sa mga kababayan natin na sa kulungan. The BJMP also recognized other sectors and service providers for their assistance and support to the agency and the PDLs. Manatili tayo ng tibay na matuwang ng pangkalaan at maasahang maling kumbayan na hindi lamang magbibigay sa kumbayan sa ating mga kumbayan kung hindi nagbibigay ng pasa din sa mga kapatid natin na sa kulungan. Sherwin Kulubong, UNTB News and Rescue. Welcome back to Y News. We pick up to where Angelo Castro III left off. 
I'm Alex Balbazar, and here are the headlines. Senators questioned the National Food Authority over the alleged millions of bags of rotten rice in its warehouses. President Rodrigo Duterte criticizes Iceland for new abortion policy. Mayor Isco Moreno reveals the amount of his first salary as the mayor of Manila City. Nicole Bonchaviles, will you marry me? Homegrown artist in Panabo City proposes to his longtime girlfriend on the wish bus. Residents and fisher folks in the Lawag City and nearby towns saw a better weather condition today, even with Typhoon Jenny still in the Philippine area of responsibility. Nel Maribohok details why. Fishermen in Pasukin Town in Ilocos Norte can now breathe a sight of relief. The weather condition over the town has improved despite the visit of Typhoon Jenny. Yolalio, a fisherman, shared they did not even feel the effects of the typhoon in their coastal community. This is after days of high waves due to the previous weather disturbance, Typhoon Ineng. Using the UNTV drone, a bird's eye view of the area can be seen. This footage shows no floods and no great damages in Lawag City, even in communities near the river which remains to have a normal water level. Last weekend, the water in the river was almost as high as the Gilbert Bridge. Some tourist destinations in the province will resume their operation by tomorrow after closing their doors due to the consecutive tropical cyclones. Bukas, uh, makakapag-operate na kami, business as usual. Uh, but uh, definitely, yung ating Cape Bohedor Lighthouse sa Burgos ay magsasara for a while at uh, ina-assess ng mabilisan kung ano ang gagawin. The supplies of electricity and water in the province have returned to normal. The provincial government, for their part, prepared relief goods and aid for the who might be affected by Typhoon Jenny. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Lawag City. The National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council says they are not expecting huge damages brought about by Typhoon Jenny. Playa Ilagan tells us why. NDRRMC spokesperson Mark Timbal says the local government units have been well prepared for the onslaught of Tropical Storm Jenny. Just a few days after Typhoon Ine struck, they are not expecting huge damages. Uh, dito po kasi sa Blue Alert, heightened preparedness po tayo at saka coordination. Kasi ang nakikita po natin, lalo na doon sa mga nakalipas din na uh, mga pangyayari, mukhang kayang-kaya pa ng mga regions natin, mga local na pamahalaan itong mga nagaganap na ito. Um, hindi pa sila direkta humingi ng tulong mula sa pamahalaang nasyonal. Typhoon Jenny crossed Luzon this morning. It is expected to leave the Philippine area of responsibility tomorrow. Meanwhile, the NDRRMC has released a report on the effect of Typhoon Ineng. Based on their data, two persons died and two others got injured in Pasukuin and Lawag City in Ilocos Norte. More than 61,000 individuals are affected in 237 barangays in Region 1, 2, and 3. 726 families or 2,748 individuals are now staying in 53 evacuation centers. 68 houses were damaged in Ilocos Norte and La Union, including 24 that were totally damaged. They have no records that the two consecutive typhoons greatly affected Metro Manila. The NDRRMC remains on Blue Alert status. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Aguinaldo. Senators reprimanded National Food Authority officials for what they called lack of concern for local farmers. Grace Kassin details why. NFA officials got a good scolding today. This after the Senate Committee on Agriculture and Food found out their negligence in their jobs to local farmers. 
baguhin nyo na yung ugali nyo yan. Kasi, alam mo, lahat ng tao, sinisisi na kayo eh. Alam mo, pag pumupunta ako sa probinsya, tatanong ka, binilang ba kayo ng NFA? Hindi po, kasi po, malat, mataas daw ang moisture content namin. Senator Amy Marcos confronted NFA about the information she got that there are millions of bags of rotten rice in NFA warehouse. At ni Judy, pagtapat na natin, ang totoo, 9 million bags pa ng imported rice ang nabubulok sa NFA ng bodega. Kaya ayaw ninyo bumili ng lokal. Hindi naman po, ma'am, bumibili po kami. Yung natitira na Pero 9 million bags ba talaga o hindi? Pagtapat na po ninyo. 4 million. 4 million na lang, ma'am. The senators told the NFA to prioritize the needs of local farmers, just like what the president wants them to do. Pag igihin nyo na yung trabaho nyo, kasi banas na banas na mga tao sa inyo eh. Idedeklar ang bulok pagkatapos yung auction sa mga paboritong trader. Huwag naman po. Hindi po ma'am minubos. Eh. Hindi po ma'am. Sana naman bigyan nyo naman kami ng pagkakantawan. Meron naman na pa yung new leadership. Uh, hindi naman po tayo masama at hindi naman po kami nagbibenta ng bulok. Senator Villar also instructed the concerned agencies to fast-track the distribution of the Rice Competitive Nest Enhancement Fund. This is for the local farmers to have the capacity to buy high-quality farming equipment. Grace Kassin, UNTV News & Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. Hog racers in Antipolo City received the cash assistance from the city government today after the culling operations of the city veterinary office and the agriculture department. But for them, the amount is not enough. Monokson will tell us why. Hog racers in Antipolo City have suffered huge losses. They were supposed to earn from investing in hogs as much as 100,000 pesos come December. But this may not materialize after the Agriculture Department called their swines. According to Josephine Cruz, the president of the hog racers in Barangay Kupang, they sell fatteners at 10,000 pesos, while piglets are sold at 5,000 pesos. Today, the Antipolo City government gave them the 3,000 pesos for each called swine. But this amount, Josephine said, is not equal to what they lost. The local hog racers appeal to the city veterinary office. Do not repeat the wrong calling procedure. Meanwhile, the ethical treatment of animals or PETA clarify the use of gas chamber on livestock is prohibited. Muna yung injectionan ng sodium pentobarbital, it's a painless method. Pangalawa, pwede silang kumuha ng sharpshooter, babarilin yung mayop sa pagitan ng mga mata sa noo. There was a time na ginagamit yung gas chamber sa pag-use na isang mga ha ng mga aso at pusa sa mga pound. And now, illegal na. But this is contrary to the statement of Executive Director Arnel de Mesa of the Department of Agriculture Region 4A that a gas chamber can be used in culling hogs. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue. The Department of Agriculture beefs up their implementation of quarantine and food safety measures amid the issue of sudden deaths of some pigs in the country. Aiko Miguel tells us why. 1710. This is the protocol the Department of Agriculture enforces when it comes to the culling of swines, as stated on a bulletin they issued. Within one kilometer radius, swines must be culled and buried right away. With a seven kilometer radius, piggeries are under surveillance by the local government to assess if swines are infected by a disease. And within a 10 kilometer radius, the sudden death of swine must be reported immediately to the DA. The DA will be joined by different government agencies the police and the military to heighten quarantine and food safety measures. The National Meat Inspection Service or NMIS will be part of the regulating body to ensure that meat sold in markets came from accredited slaughterhouses. Meat vendors must display the meat inspection certificate given them to assure buyers they sell fresh and safe meat. 
No, yung mga tendera, kailangan nyo nang pakita nila doon sa, sa mga palengke, sasabit nila doon sa mga stalls nila para makita ng mamamayan na mamimili na kinatay siya sa isang accredited na slaughterhouse. The NMIS also advises consumers to check the color, scent, and tenderness of pork. Ang isang magandang karne ay ano, ang kulay niya po ay uh, reddish, uh, pinkish to reddish siya, no? Yung kanya pong muscles or yung kanyang fats ay very translucent pa. Uh, meaning uh, hindi wala pang discoloration. For further questions on the issue of pork and deaths of swine in the country, the NMIS hotline is 9247980. Ay Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. A lawmaker suggests why not make Laguna Lake a primary source of domestic water. Muntinlupa City Representative Rufi Biazon says this is to avoid the recurrence of water supply shortage in Metro Manila next dry season. Joanano details why. Kasi ilan lang yung nakikinabang doon eh, yung pinagkakakitaan yung Laguna Lake. No, hindi para sa paggamit ng ordinaryong mamamayan kung hindi sa paggamit ng mga interest na kumpanya. For the Laguna Lake Development Authority or LLDA, it is possible to make Laguna Lake a primary source of potable water as what Congressman Gyasun suggests. However, the LLDA has no budget to conduct dredging operations in the lake in which a huge fund is required. In addition to this is the proliferation of algae that affects the quality of water. Water treatment, they add, also costs high. Ang Laguna Lake is really kaya niyang supply ang requirement for what for domestic water supply, a source of drinking water. Ang problema lang is more on the water quality. Currently, Maynilad and Manila Water get a small percentage of fresh water from Laguna Lake to supply to their customers in Metro Manila, Laguna, Rizal, Cavite, and Bulacan. Joan Anu, UNTV News and Rescue House of Representatives. The House Appropriations Committee approves the Health Department's more than 160 billion peso budget for 2020. My Bermudas explains why. Expired medicines, fill health coverage, and procurement of medicines without the approval of the Food and Drug Administration are just some of the issues faced by health officials at the House Budget hearing today. House Appropriations Committee grilled Health Secretary Francisco Duque III and other Department of Health officials for their more than 160 billion peso proposed budget for 2020. 55% will be allocated to the office of the Secretary with more than 90 7 billion pesos and 67.35 billion pesos for the operations of the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation or PhilHealth. The biggest chunk will go to the Universal Health Care Law or UHC. One of the issues tackled is the threat of dengue after the declaration of national dengue epidemic early August. Duque said from January to August 10, 2019, 208,917 cases were recorded in the country, but the fatality rate remains lower compared with that recorded in the previous years. The Commission on Audit findings on the expired medicines under Duque's watch was also discussed. May I direct the good secretary to the recent findings of the Commission on Audit, which states, among others, the existence of nearly expired medicines in item number 18, and I read, drugs and medicines amounting to 367.158 million pesos. Uh, this was uh, during the December 30, uh, 31st, 2018 uh, finding. And out of this amount, we have already distributed the amount of 2, 277,689,796.55. From the 294 billion, there are 37 uh, commodities. And out of the 37 commodities, we were able to distribute 36 uh, as of June 15. So from this amount, 94% of this were already distributed. Lanao del Norte 1st District Representative Mohamed Dimaporo also asked, why the DOH seems selective in the implementation of the Universal Health Care Program. Only 33 sites have been initially identified by the DOH for the program's rollout. But after more than seven hours, the proposed budget passed the committee level.
It is now set to be tackled in the plenary. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Kazan City. A homegrown artist in Panabo City, Davo del Norte, surprised his girlfriend on the wish bus. Here's another one for the books from Brian Evangelista. Two more lovebirds. Another proposal. The roadshow doesn't only bring music in the air, but also lots of love. Jovit, a homegrown talent of Panabo City, performed on the iconic Wish Bus together with his bandmates. <laughs> And when it was his time to perform alone in the roadshow, he called Bunch's name and asked her to join him sing. Itahang mga tao, laylay at bingsons, nga nung magpasalamat sa ginoo. O ako yung pangutan nun, isa nga akong ginapasalamatan yun sa ginoo, nga niabot si Bunch sa akong life. O, kagihatan ko niya sa ginoo sa kuha, gusto na doon kanakin ko. And then he popped the question. Will you marry me? Yes. 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 And that completed Nicole Sponge's lovely night. Hindi ko talaga inexpect, kasi hindi hindi ako hindi ako makakumakanta. Tapos, pinilit niya ako kanina na kumanta ako. Tapos yun, pinagbigyan ko na lang siya. Pero hindi ko talaga yung expect to na mapropose pala siya. Jovet is thankful, which has been instrumental to their journey towards tying the knot soon. Meanwhile, the mayor of Panabo City thanks Wish 1075 for another stop of the roadshow in their city. Actually, no, dada ko kayo kalipay nga ning pasdre ang ato ang Wish Bus. Uh, actually, na-surprise ko nga inani na yung sistema nga natin tayo inani. Pero guwapo ang programa ninyo. Ha? Guwapo kayo. Lots of music and lots of love to share. And at the Wish Bus next stop, who knows, there could be another story to tell. Brian Evangelista, UNTV News and Rescue, Panabo City. Welcome back to Y News. Maintaining already cleared roads seems to be a real challenge to Metro Manila mayors more than halfway the 60-day deadline. Vincent Arboleta will tell us why. Day and night clearing operations are being done by Metro Manila mayors to keep up with 60-day period the DILG gave them. But day and night, we can still clearly see vehicles parked where they are not supposed to be in. Just like these vehicles illegally parked on this Manila City street. In some Palok, Manila, paint marks are seen on the road as guide to drivers who will try to park their vehicles in the area. Not only illegal parking, but also double parking is also a headache. According to MMDA, the clogging on the inner roads of Metro Manila caused by illegally parked vehicles add to the heavy traffic situation in EDSA. Kaya nagkaka-traffic sa EDSA kasi yung exit points. Ito yung mga inner roads na exit. Pag na-clear natin lahat yan, luluwag ang EDSA kasi nga mas mabilis yung pag-exit nila. Ang problema, yung inner roads nga punong-puno. As a solution, some mayors in Metro Manila are now planning to use the vacant lots as parking facilities. In San Juan City, the local government planned to pass an ordinance to give rights to the San Juan LGU to use idle lots for this purpose, prioritizing the government-owned lots. Yung ating sangguneng panlusod uh, this week is already meeting para i-finalize yung ordinansa para dito. Everything will be within the 60-day deadline that has been given to us. Mayor Zamora said some private individuals have shown interest in using their properties as parking facility. Either way, bibigyan sila ng mga incentives gaya ng uh, una, hindi ka na sisingilin ng idle land tax, 5% yon. Pangalawa, we will give them as uh, much as a 5-year tax break in terms of uh, the payment of business taxes. Other mayors in Metro Manila are now planning to adapt this measure. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, Caloocan City. Many were amazed when Manila Mayor Isko Moreno Domagoso revealed his first salary to the public. But how much do government officials earn? 
Unahin ko muna to Excited ako. May sweldo na ako. <laughs> An excited mayor, Isko Moreno Domagoso, appeared in his weekly capital report last week as he showed two checks which he claimed is his first salary as the city mayor. It's 122,000 pesos, plus the representation and transportation allowance or RATA worth 28,000 pesos. In total, the local chief executive received 150,000 pesos. Alam niyo mga kababayan, magkano sweldo ko? Uh, Apakalag. 122,000. Kanina, natanggap ko na rin ang rata na 28,000. What are his plans for his first salary? May grocery na. <laughs> Tutuwa na. May, may pambili na ng gatas, daya per gatas, daya per gatas, daya. With this, some netizens were quick to express their sentiments. Some are glad, while some are worried in jest when Mayor Domagoso folded the checks. But how much do government officials earn? In the fourth tranche of the salary standardization law, the salary of Mayor Moreno falls on salary grade 27, amounting to over 121,000 up to 135,000 pesos. In Republic Act No. 6758 or the Compensation and Position Classification Act, the salary of mayors in special cities and highly urbanized cities is equivalent to salary grade 30 that amounts to as much as over 196,000 pesos. Meanwhile, the president receives the highest salary grade of 33 which amounts to almost 400,000 pesos followed by the vice president and the heads of the Congress and Supreme Court at salary grade 32 that amounts to 353,000 pesos. This may increase next year as the Department of Budget and Management proposes new set of salary increase to civilian government workers. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. President Rodrigo Duterte criticizes Iceland for its abortion policy that allows a pregnant woman to decide to abort a six-month-old human being in her womb. Eichel Miguel tells us why. Iceland's parliament passed a hotly contested bill into law which allows for an abortion until the end of the 22nd week of pregnancy in May. Iceland's previous abortion law last codified in 1975 only allowed the termination of a pregnancy up until the end of the 16th week. And last night, President Duterte in a speech during the 31st anniversary of the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program in Quezon City strongly opposed how Iceland is allowing abortion in the Nordic island country. Just like itong Iceland who initiated that uh, signature campaign to condemn us sa extrajudicial killing. But do you know that in Iceland, they allow abortion up to six months. You add one more month and you have the uh, principle of int intrauterine life that if you give birth at six months the baby will survive Iceland allows the slaughter of the fetus inside the womb of the mother up to six months that's why you are condemned there in the eyes forever I hope he will freeze in time. President Duterte also said the implementation of the law on abortion is more worrisome because it involves killing of unborn babies compared to the allegations of human rights violation against the president. Drug lords at itong mga who are pushing drugs killing our citizens and creating a social dysfunction in almost all Tinamaan, and there are about a million and six of them, who are slaves to a drug called Shabu. Hindi na naiintindihan yung mga kong yan. Itong mga Iceland, palimbasa, ice ang kain, wala namang tubig yan eh. Buk ang mga puto 
President Duterte supports family planning but he strongly opposes abortion. I will not allow it. You allow an innocent human being already thriving and living inside the mother's body. Iceland's resolution prompted Duterte to seriously consider cutting ties with the Nordic country. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. And for the news abroad, Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro might reconsider his rejection to accept the $22 million pledged by leaders at the G7 summit to fight Amazon fires. Aaron Romero will tell us why. Brazil said on Tuesday it was ready to accept foreign aid to help fight fires in the Amazon, but only if it could determine how it was spent in an apparent attempt to smooth over a public spat between the Brazilian and French presidents. The comments by presidential spokesman Hego Barros came after governors of state in the Brazilian Amazon told President Jair Bolsonaro that they needed the money to help fight the record wildfires in the world's largest tropical rainforest. Separately, a diplomatic source in Brasilia said the Brazilian government had also accepted 10 million pounds from Britain to fight the fires. Earlier on Tuesday, Bolsonaro had said he would only consider accepting a 20 million US dollars offer of aid from the group of seven wealthy nations if French President Emmanuel Macron withdrew the insults against him. We don't have anything against the G7. On the contrary, we have with one president of the G7. And we know what he's spreading and what his intentions are and why. And I think that doesn't leave a doubt for anyone. The two leaders have become embroiled in a deeply personal and public war of words in recent days, with Bolsonaro mocking Macron's wife on Facebook and accusing the French leader of disrespecting Brazil's sovereignty. Macron called Bolsonaro a liar and said that Brazilian women are probably ashamed of their president. God willing, together we will find a solution to this and give satisfaction to the rest of the world. And people with a thinking like Mr. Macron should think two or three times before wanting to get out of a complicated situation like he find himself within an enormous rejection in his country and wanting to damage us. Meanwhile, Bolsonaro thanked U.S. President Donald Trump via Twitter on Tuesday for his support over the issue of Amazon wildfires as the far-right Brazilian government sought to find a way out of growing international crisis. The Amazon wildfires have created a major crisis for the young, far-right government of Bolsonaro, who is losing popularity at home and finding himself increasingly isolated on the global stage over his response to blazes that threaten what many view as the world's key bulwark against climate change. Aaron Romero, UNTV News and Rescue. The G7 summit in the French seaside resort of Biarritz came to a close on Monday with international diplomatic relations with Iran dominating the agenda. Jovic Vermas will tell us why. U.S. President Donald Trump told a news conference before heading home that it was realistic to envisage a meeting with the Iranian head of government in the coming weeks. Both leaders are scheduled to attend the United Nations General Assembly next month. I really believe that Iran can be a great nation. I'd like to see that happen, but they can't have nuclear weapons. French President Emmanuel Macron led efforts to defuse tensions with Iran, fearing a collapse of the 2015 nuclear deal could set the Middle East ablaze. Trump offered an olive branch to China after days of intense feuding between the world's two largest economies over trade that has spooked financial markets and worried his G7 allies. Trump said he believed China wanted to make a trade deal after it contacted U.S. trade officials overnight to say it wanted to return to the negotiating table. He hailed Chinese President Xi Jinping as a great leader and said the prospect of talks was a very positive development. Trump also proposed inviting Russia back into the G7 fold into what used to be called the G8. Moscow was excluded from the group in 2014 after it annexed Ukraine's Crimea and then backed an anti-Kiev rebellion in the industrial region of Donbas in eastern Ukraine. 
British Prime Minister Boris Johnson said he was prepared to take Brexit talks with the European Union down to the very last minute before the October 31st exit deadline, and if necessary to take a decision to leave without a deal on that day. Johnson has 68 days to convince the EU to give him a new Brexit deal, with neither side so far willing to compromise on the most contentious issues. If we can get a deal, he says Britain will leave the bloc anyway. It will be it will will be difficult. There are there's a substantial uh, disagreement, but my job is to make our case, and you know what our case is: uh, that the backstop is, uh, is anti-democratic. It keeps the UK locked in uh, the the EU's uh, customs arrangement. It keeps the, us locked in the in the the legal order of the EU without any ability to influence those things. It's got to come out. It's got to change. German Chancellor Angela Merkel echoed Trump's stance, saying that as a group, the G7 do not want Iran to have nuclear weapons. While alluding to progress in talks with Rouhani and Iran, she declined to enter specifics but hoped for big progress. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau addressed the wildfires in the Amazon jungle and said Canada will make a donation towards efforts fighting the fire as well as sending water bombers. Joe Vic Burmas, UNTV News and Rescue. Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic are under states of emergency as Tropical Storm Dorian picks up steam in the Caribbean. Meanwhile, torrential rains on Wednesday caused flooding in southern Japan, killing at least two people and prompting a mass evacuation. Kat Dumaraos details why. In Japan. Torrential rains caused floods and landslides on the southern Japanese island of Kyushu on Wednesday, killing at least two people and prompting authorities to issue a rare emergency warning and evacuation orders for nearly 850,000 people. Japan's meteorological agency assigned the highest alert level of five, issuing an emergency warning to residents in large parts of northern Kyushu as they experienced torrential rains only seen once in a few decades. One man was killed when his car was washed away in Saga Prefecture, where some areas were hit by more than four inches of rainfall in an hour. Another man in Fukuoka Prefecture died after being swept away as he got out of his car. A woman in Saga was found without vital signs after her car fell into a waterway. The Ground Self-Defense Force, Japan's military said, it had deployed about 100 troops for disaster relief after a request from Saga Prefecture. In Spain, flash flooding caused by heavy hailstorms swept through Madrid on Monday, transforming roads into rivers and bringing the city to a standstill. In the town of Arganda del Rey near the capital, eyewitness footage captured cars and rubbish bins being swept away by the rushing flood waters. The state meteorological agency confirmed that further rain was expected before the end of summer. In the Dominican Republic, the Dominican Republic braced for Tropical Storm Dorian on Tuesday as it turned west-northwest, with officials cautioning that it could approach hurricane strength on Wednesday after blowing over Barbados. The storm center is expected to pass near or south of Puerto Rico on Wednesday, move near or over eastern Hispaniola Wednesday night, and move north of Hispaniola on Thursday. Barbados was hit by strong winds and intermittent showers, with periodic jolts of thunder and lightning on Monday evening. The Dominican Republic has evacuated residents living in hurricane-prone areas of the country. Kat Dumaraos, Human TV News and Rescue. Tiger Woods announced on Tuesday that he had a knee operation last week but is expected to make a full recovery and hopes to be back competing in October. The former world number one said he had an arthroscopic procedure to repair minor cartilage damage. Apart from winning the Masters, his 15th major title, the 43-year-old has had a relatively subdued season with injuries hampering his preparation and performances. Woods withdrew from the Northern Trust opened earlier this month due to pain and stiffness in his surgically repaired back. He is currently one shy of Sam Snead's record of 82 PGA Tour victories. And those are the reasons behind the news this August 28, 2019. On behalf of Angelo Castro III, I'm Alex Balthazar.
And before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening. I think China will have an open ears. After all, they kept on saying that we're friends. And friends can always talk on anything. Base sa investigasyon ng ating anti-graph, ano, it appears na uh, ganun eh, na nagkaroon sila ng ano. Kasi eh, they were given undue benefit out of the acts of uh, the accreditation uh, committee. Otherwise, hindi sila dapat naka, nakaklaim na ng 1.8 million. Judy, pagtapat na natin, ang totoo, 9 million bags pa ng imported rice ang nabubulok sa NFA ng bodega. Kaya ayaw ninyo bumili ng lokal. Hindi yun naman po, ma'am, bumibili po kami. Yung natitira ng Pero 9 million bags ba talaga o hindi? Pagtapat na po ninyo. 4 million na lang, ma'am. The rest of the passengers are being taken care of and accommodated in available facilities in the Polo. A team has been dispatched from Cebu to assist the brands and to ensure that all passengers' needs are attended uh, promptly.